don't know if anything would really blow your mind, but it was a difficult season and there were lots of uh, moments um, where it, it became more difficult, but I didn't think it was anything unusual given the state of our team and you know what we've been through and the, the length of this journey, but um, yeah, not, you know, nothing uh, to me was was that like shocking, but um, yeah, we went through some stuff. For you and the staff, was this the most arduous of the four? Oh yeah, seasons? for sure. This was the toughest of the four, uh, mainly because of the cumulative effect of um, doing this four years in a row, getting to the finals four years in a row. It's just difficult. It felt to me like um, the whole year we were just trying to get to the playoffs, and that's not a very healthy way to to do it. But we didn't have much choice. Um, it's just human nature, and um, a lot of injuries, a lot of wear and tear. So, so given that it was your most difficult um, time, would you also say it's your personal best in terms of coaching? Since no, you made it to no, I, I wouldn't <laughs> say that. Uh, every year is different, and uh, every year is unique to itself and uh, so it was just a different season um, but everyone is very satisfying in its own right and it was uh, very gratifying uh, but it took a long time to get here. Steve, would you describe it as butting up heads at, at times that maybe comes with what you guys were trying to do I mean to repeat to get to a four straight finals I mean with what was going on with the group? I think uh, I, th I think more is being made of this than okay. than, um, than anything that actually happened. I mean, I, I think uh, David is right. This was very difficult, and there were definitely some things that happened that never made it out to the press. But again, I, it wasn't you know, it wasn't that earth shattering to me. This is just kind of normal for a, a, t a team to go through some stuff during the season. I know your goal. I know your goal next season is going to be to try to make it so it's not as you know boring or whatever. But is that even possible with knowing you're going to bring four guys back? And you know, is that task even possible? Well, we have to we have to do everything we can uh, to make it uh, as smooth as possible. So, you know, it's not possible to have everybody as eager as they were in 2014-15. But uh, it's possible to, to make some changes um, to help us uh, shift our focus a little bit and. I think get, you know getting getting younger is an important factor for us. Uh, we'd love to get Loon and Patrick back. Um, we'll see what happens with them, but I think it's good that we're going to be relying on a lot of a lot of young guys like Damian Jones and, and Jordan Bell and uh, Quinn Cook, and um, you know so that's part of it. And part of it will be just how we treat it as a staff. And I'm a big believer in the game within the game. Um, we're going to have to have a lot of games within the games uh, next year. Steve, along those lines, what did, what did you see from the bench this season? And what ways beyond what you mentioned the, the youth part? Do you think that can get better? But the bench was great this year. We had a lot of uh, specialized players. You know, we, we took some grief for having five or six centers, but every one of them uh, played an important role for us this year, uh, including in the playoffs. You know. Um, the league has changed so much, and you have to be ready for different challenges. And uh, so I thought at various times, uh, you know, David West was our fifth best player for much of the season. You know, Zaza started 50 plus games and helped us win a lot, and took on a major leadership role for us after he was out of the rotation. You look at Javel, started the first round and the finals, and not, and not much in between, uh, but the matchups dictated that. Uh, Jordan and Looney really came into their own the last two series. So, um, you know, the bench was good. I thought Nick Young played well in the playoffs, played really well defensively. He hit probably the biggest shot in game seven against Houston on the road. I thought his three turned the tide in that game. And um, in the end, when you're talking about a bench that uh, it's trying to help a team win a title. That's what it's about. It's not about putting up great numbers. It's about helping you win games and series. And every one of those guys contributed. I didn't, I didn't even mention Quinn, the job he did when Steph was out. Part of your bench's obligation is to help you get through injuries and get through the long stretches of the season where you're, you're kind of fried. And uh, so I, I think our bench will um, probably 
get a little more credit when people really take a look back at, at uh, what we needed and what they provided this year. You, you talk, about, uh, talk, about, talk a little bit about David. Are you going to uh, turn this off since with the mindset that he'll be back or, or no? We, uh, we've had exit meetings uh, today, not with everybody, uh, but with a lot of our guys. And uh, you know, I think everyone is in a different situation uh, based on their own career, their own life so um, David's going to take some time to decide whether he wants to continue playing or uh, whether he's going to retire and um, you know we have to see how our roster sh shapes up during free agency with with Patrick and Looney and um, maybe some other free agent potential free agents uh, out there including David including Zaza, Javel. Um, I think the safe thing to say is that we're not going to have the same look next year in terms of having sort of five or six vets. We're gonna, I, I just mentioned we're going to be younger. We're going to have more, more youth, more energy um, to try to help us through the regular season. But uh, it's, it's impossible to predict exactly what the roster will look like right now. Steve, you mentioned yeah. Steph's injury. How much did like, he obviously played far fewer games than you mm -hmm. in previous seasons? How did, much did his sort of his personality or temperament get him through that and get the team through the difficult regular season. Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, playing without Steph is a huge challenge, but it made our team better. Um, having to get through, having to learn how to get through without him in a couple of key stretches of the season. Uh, but knowing he was going to come back also helped us through. You know, I, losing him for the season, I think, would be uh, a blow that would be too difficult to overcome, given what he means to us, not only on the court, but off. Um, but knowing he was coming back, um, our guys held down the Ford, and then I thought Steph was amazing uh, when he returned in the playoffs. You, you talked about the, uh, on the broadcast. You, you told Damian Jones after the game, next year is your year or, or something to that effect. Was that uh, specifically for him, or was that more of the Royals and just the, the younger guys that you mentioned? Um, both, really. I mean, Damian has spent the last two years preparing for next year. That's the way I look at it. We knew he was going to be in Santa Cruz most of this year. He needed to play. Uh, we're not going to have a roster full of um, veteran players. As I said, we're going to have a lot of young guys. So I anticipate that we will start training camp with some great competition in camp. Um, and Damian will be right in the mix in all that. And uh, that, that's what I was referring to. The next year is a huge opportunity for him. How has the celebration been the past couple of days? And how different has it felt from the previous two celebrations? Muted. <laughs> it's been muted for me anyway. I, I tried to go to a party on uh, Friday night um, that a lot of the guys were at. My family went to, and I was a complete wet blanket for about two hours and Ubered home and went to sleep. I'm tired. You didn't get lit? I didn't get lit, but Nick Nick got lit for me and for him. So he covered both of us. Steve, how gratifying was it for you as a coach to see when Steph was out, when all the four All-Stars were out? and guys like Quinn Cook. I mean, the way these young kids prepare yeah. to take on those big roles. Uh. Well, as I said, every season is so different and unique, and, it, and it's always fun to see how players respond to uh, opportunity and adversity. And uh, I thought um, Quinn Cook was one of my favorite stories all season, you know, what he did when Steph was out. Um, not only stepping in and starting, but you know, the guy was putting up numbers, you know, and Playing with so much confidence, and uh, it's fun to think about. Um, you, know, you think about how proud uh, you know, his family is of him, and how happy he is to be really putting himself in a place to have a long NBA career. Um, those are the stories you really uh, kind of look for during the season and, and uh, feel good about when the season's over. Oh, I was uh, very emotional um, after the Steve in the locker room. Who was? Uh, Patrick, yeah. um, have you had a chance to talk to him and just sort of how he's processed all of this and, and just sort of what that trophy meant to him? Yeah, we talked today. Um, you know, he, Patrick and Bob and I met upstairs and talked a lot about his injury and his season and uh, mainly about just how happy we all are that he's uh, healthy. You know, that was the scary thing at the time. Obviously, we didn't know if he'd ever play basketball again. So the fact that he made it through that time, that difficult time, Came back and played uh, in the playoffs um, in the last two series. Had, um, 
is really gratifying for him and for us, and we're excited for him, uh, hopefully, uh, to be here next year, although he could go elsewhere. He's put himself in a, in a good position, and he's a free agent, but uh, we'd, uh, we'd love to get him back. I hope I don't get fined for that. Am I, am I still <laughs> fined? I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure of these rules. Steve, when you talk about celebrations tomorrow, it's a big day, it's the parade. Are you ready for it? And there are some fans out there who are a little disappointed that there's not going to be a celebration that weekend. Of the parade. Um, oh, the rally at yeah. the end. Yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled for the, uh, the parade. Um, it's one of the best days of the year. Um, it's, I, I speak of it like it's like an annual event. Um, <laughs> we're, trying, we're trying to make it that. It's not quite that easy, but uh, three in the last four years. Um, I have such great memories of the first two. Um, something about Oakland that uh, is really special. I mean, obviously, we're the Bay Area's team, but you know, you go through the streets of Oakland and you see everybody's faces and the joy and the diversity and the passion and the, the whole community coming together. Uh, it's pretty cool. So I'm uh, I'm really excited. And uh, and as far as a rally, I screwed up last year and didn't mention Steph Curry's name. So I'm kind of happy there's no rally. I, I can't make any mistakes this year. You mentioned this. You mentioned the desire to go young. Is there also a, a need, a must to, to flip bigs into wings to maybe only have? Well, I mean, more than likely we will have a better ratio. Um, the thing that I, I think I mentioned to you when we talked about this during the playoffs is the um, main thing is you got to guys, you got to have guys who, who can have a role. And uh, in the end, um, we pretty much needed all of our centers this year. Um, you know, Zaza was our starter for 55 games or so and uh, didn't play much in the playoffs, but was a huge leader for us. And every other guy, there was a matchup that we needed a center for. So it's gotten difficult um, in this league to determine exactly what you need. Um, we could have had three fewer centers and three more wings, and maybe none of the wings would have been able to guard James Harden or Chris Paul on a switch, and I wouldn't have played them. So um, the fact is, all those big guys came through for us when we needed um, the injuries to Patrick and Andre hurt us, but we were able to withstand that, and in the end, it all worked out. How soon do you think you and Joe are able to talk numbers? And all Say that again. How soon do you think you and Joe are ready to talk numbers? Uh, we'll we'll get that done pretty quick. I don't think it'll be there'll be much to it, um, and uh, it'll it should happen pretty relatively quickly. Coach LeBron is available. Yeah, yeah that's. <laughs> <laughs> Not allowed to talk about that. That's for sure. Steve, uh, you're one of a half dozen coaches to win six, to win three or more NBA championships. Did, did blow your mind a little bit. A bit uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, I never could have envisioned this. I, I know when I took this job, I thought we could be really good, but I could have uh, I could never have dreamt of three titles in four years. So it's uh, pretty uh, pretty incredible to be a, a part of the group and the organization. Have you Is have you heard from Pop then? since? Yeah, this last yeah. Pop and I talk all the yeah. time. So um, he's, uh, you know, he's one of my uh, good friends and um, an important mentor for me. And uh, so we always stay in touch. Steve, is this the greatest basketball dynasty of all time? And how would it match up against the teams you played on? Uh, it, yeah, it'd be it'd be hard to beat the Celtics of the '60s. I don't know exactly how many they won. I think it was like ten out of eleven or something. So that's probably never going to happen again. Uh, what about the teams you played on? Uh, it's a similar feeling, you know. I don't get into the ranking, all that stuff. Um, it's just whoever you like, whatever you know, floats your boat. So, um, but having been there and being been here, it's a uh, it's a similar feeling of um, you know winning pretty consistently at a high level. Those Bulls teams won six in eight years. Um, I was only part of the last three, but um, you know, winning three out of four is not easy and. Uh, Six, six out of eight um, for Michael and Scotty and the core of that team was just incredible. Um, but we're, we're still young enough where we can still compete and we're going to keep going for it. And at the end, you guys can all rank where, where we end. Steve, did you ever think about how things would have gone if they didn't turn out this way? And just sort of what's the gratification like or just sort of the relief now that you got to head into a break and it's in summer? You mean if things hadn't worked out this way, like if we had lost in the playoffs? Or, yeah. Um, no, I don't, I don't really think about that. I mean, everything's just going to happen uh, based on some good fortune and a lot of effort, and you put yourself in a position to win, and 
one thing I always talk about is we want to give ourselves a, a swing at the plate every single year as long as we have this group that's capable of contending. And we've done that. It doesn't mean we hit a home run every time, but uh, three out of four times we've, uh, we've been able to finish it off. All four times we've given ourselves a chance, and uh, that's the main thing. But um, we all feel very fortunate to, to be here and to have won another title. Steve, How obviously the biggest difference to... in these last two teams is the first title team. Kevin's presence. Yeah. Uh, beyond the obvious scoring and what he had on the court, how is sort of the vibe? How is the team different with him these last two um, years? I think there's a deeper level of confidence. That's the main thing. You know, the first couple of years without Kevin, uh, we were a more vulnerable team. You know, we uh, you, you all remember Game Seven against Cleveland. We couldn't score the last four minutes in 2016. Right. Uh, that's no no longer a problem. Uh, we we can go through. A tough game for everybody else, like in Game Three this year, where Steph and Clay are missing, um, and that kind of night three years ago would have killed us. Um, with this team, Kevin just says, "All right, I got this," and goes and gets 43 points. And uh, so it's an incredible array of talent, um, and it's an incredible luxury to be able to count on so many guys because in the playoffs you don't know what's going to come, and there are going to be difficult nights. Uh, but Kevin has given us. A, a level of confidence and, and depth of, of superstar talent that we didn't have before. Can you share what uh, some of your plans are now, how long you relax before you yeah. have to get back? Uh, well, you know, fortunately, I don't have a major commitment. I'll, I'll be at Summer League in Las Vegas, but I'm not going to do anything. Willie Green will coach the team, and I'll just observe, and uh, I'll come, come in for the draft, and I'll come in for a draft workout tomorrow. But. For me, it's uh, there's no work at all. I'm just uh, watching and, and uh, enjoying my time and uh, enjoying my family. And um, there's really not a major commitment like there is uh, for Bob and the management side um, with free agency and the draft. So I'm going to be relaxing quite a bit the next few months. I'm looking forward to it. How important is that pick? Do you think? Uh, you take it yeah, I think it's a big deal. And. Um, Having talked to our scouts, not just Bob, but, but Reggie and Lamont and uh, Larry Harris, I mean, we we like the pick. They they like the pick, I should say. I don't know enough about the draft, but I trust them. They've been amazing these last few years uh, in uh, picking guys who have contributed, um, you know, late in the first or even mid second. So uh, they think that we're going to get an impact player, and I have a feeling I'm going to play that guy and give him a chance. Um, next year given the, the state of our team. So it's exciting. Steve, as successful as you guys have obviously been these past four years, because of the core you have of all stars and free agent, do you have any sense of feeling like you guys are just getting this thing started? It's, it's hard to say that because um, you know, it started four years ago <laughs> and four years is an eternity in the NBA. But what's exciting is uh, there is the realization and thought that uh, we're young enough where we can keep competing uh, for the next few years, and, and uh, we hope to do so. Uh, but we're also uh, aware of how difficult this is, and um, and there's also a chance that we never even get this far again. Um, but we have a chance, and uh, our guys are young enough and uh, experienced enough now where we feel like we're going to compete the next few years and hopefully, uh, you know, keep, keep doing what we're doing. How committed is the organization to going over the cap to try to maintain the excellence of the team? Well, all you have to do is look at our track record. You know, Joe and Peter have committed every resource to hanging those banners up there, and uh, that's what it takes. Um, to me, everything in sports starts at the ownership level, and we're lucky. We have the best owners in sports, and they're committed to winning, and they're one of the big reasons that we're sitting here uh, celebrating all this success from the last few years. You talk about the youth of the core. From your experience as a player and watching Michael and Scotty, what is an NBA player's prime? What, what is the realistic outer limit? Well, it depends. I mean, I, I uh, you know, you could look at LeBron and say he's in his right. prime right now, and he's 34, I think, or almost 34. Yeah. Um, so it really depends. I, I think, generally speaking, around 30, um, it's important for athletes to really take the next step. You know, before 30, you can eat Skittles and you know, <laughs> go play 40 minutes and nothing. And then all of a sudden 30 comes and like, ooh, that wasn't a good idea, you know, and the body starts to hurt a little bit more. And, um, 
I think that it's important for Kevin, Steph, Clay, Draymond, um, and I know they're already doing this, but it's important for them to take the big picture over the next three, four, five years and do everything possible to uh, extend their primes because uh, it does take more work as you go.